it's overwhelming, but it's also our jobs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> our job is only going to get harder. It's worrisome. Well, this is something that's unprecedented. Now is not the time to be a cowboy. No one has anything to prove. We're all in this together. Welcome to Reporting from the Front Line of a Pandemic. I'm Lauren Granada, and I'm here with Ed Harding, evening anchor at WCVB-TV in Boston. Ed, thank you for joining me. My pleasure. My first question for you is how have you had to adjust with everything going on with coronavirus right now? You know what? It's, uh, it, it's, it's, there's not a simple answer, and here's why. Um, television, I've, I've always believed that television is an intimate medium. And by that I mean uh, you're, you're close up on the screen and you're in people's kitchens while they're making their dinner. You're in the bedrooms and they're going to bed at night. I know people that have televisions in their bathroom. You're in the intimate spaces in their life and you're delivering information to them. So you're already in an intimate setting. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a little more personal when you, you know, we tend to, the news people tend to be almost invitees to uh, to dinner with you at night or something. So if you're, if, if you're, kind enough as, as a as a viewer to invite me or Maria and us into your home that's wonderful and then we're we're obviously dealing with uh, a, a situation where I don't think I came in let me give you an example I came in today at four o'clock mm -hmm. and well I came in earlier but I went on the air at four and at 7 30 I was still talking about COVID-19 so it, it is completely consumed us and I think viewers get tired of that I honestly do and then they're scared so you're, you're delivering hard information, difficult information to hear, and uh, it, it kind of is, is a little more, it, it puts a more somber tone to the day. So it, it has changed the tone of the day. It has changed the, the, uh, you know, the information that you present. But you also have to recognize that, that you're still in an intimate relationship with people and you have to massage that. You have to be mindful of that. Last week, I spoke with Maria, and she said that um, obviously it's been an adjustment for for you and her to be apart when you're so used to being in proximity wise close to each other when you're anchoring. Um, and she was saying that you guys were stepping on your toes on each other's toes a little bit because of the distance. So, has have you guys figured out your routine? I mean, how are you adjusting to that part? No, no, it's, it, 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 it's like it, it's like if you uh, it's like if you play baseball. The, you one day you're facing a pitcher that's got a 98 mile an hour fastball. The next day you, you face a pitcher that's got an 89 mile an hour fastball. So you have to adjust your swing to to account for that. So you can adjust your swing and you uh, and and eventually you learn how to hit the 89 and the 98 mile an hour fastball. But it, it, that it, that's that's a great point that Maria had, and it goes back to what I was mentioning to you earlier. Television is such an intimate medium that. The way I like to do television is I like to sit real next to, close to my co-anchor. So we're together. So there's no, there's no distance on the screen. We are we are as one. We move as one. Mm -hmm. We communicate as one, uh, and yet we have our own distinctive personalities, but, but different approaches. And now, you know, she and I are uh, on the screen. We're on a split screen, but we're a good thirty feet apart, maybe even more than that now. And we that's the other thing too. Is we we travel in a, 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 not just a tiny circle, a, a minuscule circle. I mean, I only come into contact with Maria, the weather person, it's usually Mike Wonkum, the floor director, mm -hmm. and that's it. Those are the only people that I come in contact with in the day. And then I leave out a different door and I come back in a different door. So, I mean, my whole life, you know, it's just in terms of interaction has been reduced down to three people. How does that make you feel? Yeah, almost lonely. Lonely was almost the first word to come out of my mouth. Because you love to, I love to, when, when all the time, be talking to anybody. You know, face-to-face, -face, talking to people. I'm a uh, uh, I'm a face-to-face -face talker. I'm, I'm a toucher. I like to shake hands and, you know, high-five and all that stuff. And, you you know, you can't do that. It seems like it, it, it takes some... It takes something away from you, so it almost feels lonely at times. You know, you, you can you can do this. You can FaceTime. Mm -hmm. You can uh, you can text all the time. That's fine. 
but there is uh, there's just an intimacy that's lost because of this that that personally I like it. It's personally important to me. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you are reporting the facts of this virus and everything that's happening, but you are also, as you said, experiencing your own personal, you know, um, story through through this epi this pandemic. Um, how hard is it to balance work and your own personal home life? It, it's it, it, that's a that's a good question because it's. I, it's just not easy because my son works in New York City, and, mm -hmm. and he works at he works at WNBC. He's a full grown man. I mean, he's a he's he's obviously an adult, but he's always my son. You know what I mean? So he he lives in New York City. He he's out in the streets in New York City, and and uh, every day I every day the phone rings. Every day that I walk out the door. Every time I get a text, I'm always fearful. It's going well. It's going to be a text telling me something I don't want to hear. So, uh, so there's there's that. Uh, uh, my wife has been working from home, uh, but she goes out to the to, to keep me away from it so I can stay healthy. And she goes out to, you know, whatever CVS or the mm -hmm. or the grocery store yeah. and does all the stuff to keep the house going. And I feel badly about that. I mean, that's a shared experience that she's doing by herself now to keep me as as healthy as as you know away from the virus and. And then she doesn't obviously. A, she doesn't want to get it. B, she doesn't want to bring it into the house so I could get it. So it's uh, you know it, it it doesn't go away. It's constantly with you. You know, it's not like you can it, like a baseball game that starts in the first inning and ends in the ninth inning and then you go home. No, it, there's it, this this game is going into extra innings, and I can't wait for it to end. Hmm. And you obviously your job alone just has you have lots of social responsibility. Um, but your viewers now more than ever are looking to you um, for the facts and for what's going on. Every day it's different. So do you feel more pressure? I mean, this is something brand new that you're experiencing. Well, now the answer to that, and, and I don't mean it to sound self-serving, the answer to that is no. Uh, I, I, uh, I worked through the marathon bombing. I lived here through the marathon bombing. Uh, uh, I've, I've been here through the tornadoes in, in Springfield, uh, and I'm here through this. There's, there's a, after a while, you, you, you have enough experience being in, in situations that are, that are difficult mm -hmm. and you learn in those situations to, I always believe that you should be, uh, that you should be human. The, the same person you are on the air is the same person you are off the air. So uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with being, for example, if, if and I, I cried a couple of times on the air during the marathon bombing. I cried a couple of times on the air during 9-11. Uh, there's nothing wrong with being uh, human and, and revealing and allowing, allowing the wall to break down. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Because it goes back to the very beginning when I told you that television is intimate medium. You can share intimate moments with people. Mm -hmm. uh, so, no, I don't feel any more pressure. There's uh, uh, Ted Williams. It, it was, Ted Williams was a great hitter for the Red Sox, and he always someone said to him, "Geez, you know the the distance between the pitcher letting go of the ball and the ball arriving at home plate. The, the distance is sixty feet six inches, and the time is about a second. Mm -hmm. And Ted Williams said, "And in that second, my world slows down. I can see the rotation of the ball. I see what happens, and I hit it. When that red light goes on." The world slows down to me. I can see it crystal clear, and there's no sense in, in in speeding through it. You just address the moment that you're in. So uh, the, my world still slows down. So I don't, knock on wood, <laughs> I don't feel any more pressure now than I've ever felt. Does that, has that always come naturally to you, or did you have to no. learn that? Yeah, sometime? yeah, yeah. That, no, that's, that comes with uh, doing it again and doing it again and doing it again and failing and doing it again and failing and doing it again and failing. And then suddenly there's one day when you do it and it succeeds and then you do it again and it succeeds. And then you develop whatever your rhythm is. You know, my rhythm is different from your rhythm is different from Maria's rhythm is different from anyone else's rhythm, but you'll find your rhythm. You'll find you. And when you find you, uh, it's, it's really, it's a good feeling because then things come at you at a much lower rate.
And what are viewers saying to you? What are, what's been coming in? You know, you can you can hear the fear in uh, in the whatever the level of no matter the platform, emails, texts, uh, on on Twitter, wherever, mm -hmm. Facebook. You can you can hear the feel, the fear. They're um, they're concerned about: Am I going to get my twelve hundred dollar stimulus check? How do I get my check? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't. You know, I, I I wasn't a good person. I didn't file my taxes. How can I get my stimulus check? I want I want my stimulus check. Um, now, a frequent thing is t today, for example, we we showed the Patriots plane arriving with all the gear, yeah. which was a, you know, a hopeful moment and a heroic moment. And I got four or five emails from people saying, wait a minute, they're not social distancing. They're not standing apart. So mm -hmm. so I hear fear in people's uh, communications. And, and I, I use that as I understand. So normally... Um, I, I speak quickly and strong with a strong voice and quickly and I might make a joke here and there normally I don't make that many jokes anymore and I don't speak that quickly on the air anymore so that if I can be a little calming while I'm on the air maybe for an hour two hours a half hour whatever they're watching even though we're delivering difficult information it can be calm and um, you mentioned, you know, the Patriots plane I was watching, and there were some some technical issues I, I thought I heard. Um, oh, yeah. And so, I mean, has the, have the, te the technical issues increased, and has that added more stress on all of you guys? Oh, no, 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 no. It, it, uh, they haven't increased. <clears throat> we, we, we've changed the way that we actually do our production, but... The technical glitches don't, you know, you, you have live TV. It's it's really one of the last bastions of live TV. The late night shows are, are not, most of the time, they're not live. 99.9999% of the time, they're not live. Sometimes they are, but it's rare. The uh, the news shows, even the national news shows, are, are a portion of them are taped and a portion of them are live. We're, we're one of the last bastions of absolute live performance, so when it, when, it, when whatever happens, it happens. But you know what? I think I think viewers don't mind that. If, if it happens, it happens. You, you either acknowledge it, you giggle at it, you deal with it, you ignore it, whatever the situation calls for, and then you move on. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that people now, and now after watching the news, it really the COVID stuff kind of hit the fan around the middle of March. And I would think by now, people are used to seeing people on, you know, on, on, their iPhones or on their laptops or whatever in their house doing whatever it is they're doing. So they don't care about it. It is what it is. So uh, viewers, I find, are very uh, uh, they're very adaptable. Whatever happens, that's all right. They, they might giggle at it, but whatever. It, you know, it's fun. And I usually giggle at it, too, and there will be a day again when I'll giggle at it. So. What's something new that you've learned through, through all of this? Something new that I have learned through this. Something new. Wow, that's a great question. You're, you're constantly reminded of how resilient people are, how much they want uh, good news, uh, how, much it, how much it comfort it brings them, how much joy they can get from just the simplest of, of, of news. But the, but the thing I learned new most of all is that I can't mail anything to New York because that's where my son is. And they, I tried three times to mail him a package and he can't get it. So it annoys me. <laughs> but I've, also, I've learned that we can do a newscast anywhere. Anywhere, anytime, with anything. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, Maria and I both have, and, and so do the weather people and other people. Uh, technical setups at our house that we can we can go live from our house. We could do a newscast from anywhere, do anything. And and as I mentioned at the beginning, television is an intimate medium. But there's also one other thing that I've always believed, and I think it's true. And this is this is re this this episode has reinforced this for me that people watch people. They don't watch graphics. They don't watch a fancy set. They don't watch the best video pictures are pretty but they don't they, that's okay that doesn't stay with them people watch people 
and when they're in a time of, of need, uh, they they watch the people that that bring them the most comfort, and that's nice. And it, it, it's not that it's a new thing I learned, but it's the thing that get re, that has gotten reinforced in the last month, mm -hmm. and that's nice. So do you that think, I don't think for yeah. yeah. Do you think that the adjustment will change the way that newscasts are are presented in the future? That's a great question. And, and we, I'll be honest with you, Laura, we have that discussion every day. H have, have we changed? Have our lives changed? Mm -hmm. For example, will reporters stay in their houses and do, do live shots on, on laptops rather than with the expensive equipment that, that people buy to go live with? Will, mm -hmm. that, will that continue? Um, I think you'll see some things continue. I think we will change because of this. We have stripped a, you've been in our, in our newsroom and you know, you, we don't have a lot of people in the newsroom, but we have people in the newsroom. But now, right now, one, two, there are like four people in the newsroom, which I, and I don't see them. So I don't even know where they are. So, um, people are writing at their, from their homes, the writers, the producers are at their homes. Mm -hmm. Uh, the executive producers are at their homes and they're making the decisions from their homes. Uh, and we're learning a way to do with that. I, I'm not sure it's going to be 100% back, but I think that there are there are ways that people are going to uh, uh, they're going to look hard at how we how we have done it in the last two months and maybe you know maybe well next month maybe two more months from there. So how we do it over this three month period, mm -hmm. and they may say, wait a minute, there are some things that we can take from it. There hasn't been uh, none of the salespeople, for example, who who really work hard to to sell the product and then bring the money into the building they haven't been in this building for a month wow. so why should they be in the building they don't mm -hmm. have to be in the building i mean they can they can operate from their homes mm -hmm. and they can they can go visit their clients once you can go visit clients on the road so there's there's no reason to to have the office space so we'll see how it happens i, I the thing that sits in the back of my mind is what will happen to the herald what's going to happen to the globe mm -hmm. are, are those is this going to force them to go belly up? Uh, I know there's a big problem on radio right now in terms of, especially sports talk radio, in terms of how people can get paid. People are being asked to take pay cuts. So it's, it's tough. It's hitting everybody. And what's your advice for anyone wanting to go into broadcast journalism? Be yourself. Don't be the biggest mistake that that I made when I first got into the business. I grew up around here, and the, the uh, I watched Bob Lobel. I watched a, uh, a guy by the name of Roger Twibell on TV, and when I and Len Berman, who was on television when I was here. So when I went out, I was a sports guy originally. And so when I went out to work, I was a combination of those three guys on the air. And then it, it took me eight years to realize why 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 don't I just be me? And so I I made a shift. It was a, a guy I worked with in Indiana who uh, who told me why why aren't you the same guy on television that's in the newsroom? And I said, well, I don't you know I don't know. I never thought about it. And he said, put the put the newsroom guy on TV. That's that's the that's fine. That's great. Do that. And it was the best advice I ever got. So I would always recommend. That no matter what you are, be yourself. The camera will will reveal if you're not. Uh, the camera will adore you if you are. Uh, and you cannot. The only other thing, that, well, and other thing. It's not the only other thing. And other thing that I would say is uh, there's no such thing as reading too much. You can never read too much. You can never learn too much. And it's always good to read different perspectives. I read Chicago papers and Houston papers. At LA papers, just to read a different perspective. Uh, I want to. Your thirst for knowledge should never end. And and one of the one of the best answers I, I ever got was I was out at uh, I, I worked in Indiana and I remember there was a there was a I didn't ask the question but I was in a, in a scrum with other reporters and and a race car driver uh, mentioned something about a particular aspect of a car. And, you know, here I am thinking, well, you know, I have no idea what the guy's talking about, but I'm going to be cool. I'm going to act like I know what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And this person next to me said, I'm sorry, I don't know what the, you know, p -p -p part you just talked to. I don't know what that is. And the guy, the driver said, looked him straight in the eyes and, and with a wonderful response, said, 
It's the most important part of the car, and here's why. It does this and blah, blah. So he gave the best answer to a question, the simplest question. Why? What, do you, what, what does that do? Oh, well, it does this. This is important, and blah, blah, blah. So uh, it never. there's no such thing as a bad question. You should be yourself, and you should read, 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 read. The only bad question is the one that's not asked. True. Amen. Is there anything else that you would like to add or tell us? I would. I would also tell. I would also say that when I was at Emerson, I never realized how valuable the Emerson education would be until I got in the field, and now I know how wonderful it is. So enjoy the people and, and embrace it because that's what makes Emerson the thing that it is. It's wonderful. It's great people. It's a great experience. It prepares you well. Well, Ed, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me, and thank you for all of the work you're doing to keep us safe and informed. And thank all of you for watching this episode of Reporting from the Frontline of a Pandemic. I've been talking with Ed Harding, evening anchor at WCVB-TV in Boston. I'm Lauren Granada.